Hello guys. So finally we are here. <laughs> Welcome officially to our 100 days coding challenge. Um, I'm sure we are ready. I'm sure we are prepared for this. Um, like I told us, this is a free training and it's just a way of giving back to the society. Um, so this is going to take us from scratch from scratch, you know, not knowing what um, web development is or software development is to doing live projects yourself within this 100 days coding program. All right. And I'm sure that we are ready to put in the time and to put in the work. As a programmer, as a developer, you must be ready to put in the work. Code every day. That is the slogan. Code every day. So you must code every day. All right. And like I always say, if one person can do it in, then I too can do it. So if anybody has ever done programming before, I too can do it. And that is the spirit I want you to carry from this moment that you too can do it. It's simple. It's not difficult if you put your mind there. So, one more time, welcome to our 100 Days Coding Challenge. Let's go. All right. So, why learn web development? Why? Why are we learning this? Why do I need to learn this? Um, I would just say, number one, it's because you need to solve a, a, a problem. You need to be a solution to problems, yeah? And number two, you need more money. <laughs> yeah. So while solving problems, you're making money. Why solving problems, right? So that is why you need to become a web developer. Number one, to solve problems. Number two, to make more money, right? Everyone likes money. Everyone likes to make money. So of course, this is one of the best keys that can give you that chance to make money. Why? Because you can work as a freelancer, you can work for an organization, and then you can also work for yourself as an agency owner. Right? So, that is why we are learning this. So, web development, how it works. How does it work? So, I'm just going to take this from the basics. From the basis. So, you know, Websites are collections of files and codes that are stored on a server. And that server is connected to the internet. So when you access a website, the website simply has some files and some, some, some documents that are stored somewhere in a server. Right. And how do you access a website? By using a client. And the client is your browser. All right. So, you access the website using a client to get information from the website. And where do you get information from? You get information from the server. Right. So, this is how it works. Now, you are, from your computer, your browser, any browser you use, either Chrome, Firefox, Safari, or Primini, uh, any 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 browser you use actually um, it's called a client so when you send a request and say I am requesting for a particular HTML document that request will move from your client which is your local computer to the server through the internet and that request will then return a response from the server to your client, right? So that is simply what, how it works. Okay, now let's consider that um, a friend sent you a link to a funny video. When you click on the link, your web browser, which is the client, sends a request to the video website, which is the server where the video is stored asking for that video file. Now, the website server receives the request 
and send the file to your computer. So that is how it work. So you type something from your browser, looking for, searching for a particular information, and that information is sent to the server, and the server then returns whatever you're asking for. That is how it works. We're going to do dive more into this as we progress. So the client side and the server side are referred to as the front end and the back end respectively. Front end web developers focus on the website's client side. Please pay attention. Why the back end web developers focus on the website's server side development? Let me explain this. So the client side, it's actually the responsibility of the front end developers. The server side is the responsibility of the back end developers. The client side is the responsibility of the front end developers. The server side is the responsibility of the back end developers. Right. Now, We also have what we call full stack developers. I'm sure you've heard of this before. Someone will say, I'm a, front, I'm, a, I'm a front end developer, or I'm a back end developer, or I'm a full stack developer, and you wonder what it means. We're still going to break this down, so don't fret. Now, full stack developers work as both front end and back end developers. So they know the front end technologies and also know the back end technologies. Now, so now you know what a front-end developer is, what a back-end developer is, and what a full-stack developer is. A front-end developer is concerned with the client side of the website, that is the feel, the look of the website. The back-end developer is concerned with the server side, where information is stored on the cloud, and then the full-stack developer is concerned with both the front-end and the back-end of the website. I hope that is clear. Now, what is HTTP? HTTP stands for Hypertext Transfer Protocol. Hypertext Transfer Protocol. So this is what is responsible for sending requests to the server from the client and returning response from the client to the server. So the communication between client computers and web server is done by sending HTTP requests and receiving HTTP response. Hypertext transfer protocol. Please remember this. Don't forget this. Hypertext transfer protocol. Now, what is the World Wide Web? I'm sure you've heard of this before. So, World Wide Web is about communication between web clients and web server. So, clients are often browsers. You know, I said this before, they're often browsers. And servers are most often computers that are stored in the cloud. So, HTTP requests and response. I already, already I have mentioned this. You know, you do request and you get response using the hypertext transfer protocol. Now, this is just a circle of how it looks. So, this is the client computer. From the client, from the browser, you send a request. It goes to the server looks for the information from the server and then returns the response back to the client. So that is how it works. So it sends a request using hypertext transfer protocol and then it returns using hypertext transfer protocol. What is front-end development? Yeah. So like I said before, you can end a career as a front-end developer, as a back-end developer, or as a full-stack developer. And what this means is that you can actually say, oh, I just want to be a front-end developer. I don't want to concern myself with back-end developer. It's okay. Or you can say, I just want to be a back-end developer. I don't want to be a front-end developer. It's okay. Or you can say, you know what? I just want to know the two. I want to be both front-end and back-end developer. It's okay. But the truth is, you make more money as a back-end developer. Why? Then, for instance, 
front-end developer takes home 500k. A back-end developer takes home 500k. A full-stack developer will maybe take 800, 900, or even 1 million k, right? So that is why I would advise that you put in the effort in order to become a full-stack developer. So front-end developers create the content you see when interacting with the website. These include the virtual elements such as menus, buttons, and animations that can execute on a client's machine. Front-end developers use three primary languages, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So what this means is that by the time you learn and know HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, you are automatically a front-end developer. Now, don't get me wrong. You are still going to learn about um, design. You are still going to learn about version control. You are still going to learn about some frameworks that you can use. But for the languages you need, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript can give you a beautiful website as a front-end developer. Quote me anyway. So by learning these three languages, you are already a front-end developer. What is HTML? Simply hypertext markup language. We we'll still get to that. Now, HTML helps to create the website structure. So every website you see on the internet has got some element of HTML in it. CSS. CSS is to change how the website looks like. The colors, the fonts, you know, the beauty of the website is done by CSS. It just ties the website. It ties the website for you. And then JavaScript helps to to bring that interactivity between elements, you know, in the website. So, like I said before, by learning HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, you are already a front-end developer. So that these are just the three languages you need to become a front-end developer. And then you can learn other frameworks that will make your job to be easy, like SaaS, like um, React, like Bootstrap, just to make your job easy. All right. Back-end developer. A back-end developer, like we said before, is concerned with the server side of the web, where data is stored. That is the work of the back-end developer, where data is stored. Take, for instance, you, you get a mobile app, you downloaded a mobile app. For the first time, they're going to ask you to sign up. And when you sign up, your details that you sign up with are transferred using hypertext transfer protocol to the web server. The web server then store your details. Now, the next time you come to use that web application, they are going to ask you to log in, no longer sign up. Then when you tap on login, you put in the password and the username you use while signing up for that particular web application, it will return back to you that you've been logged in. Why? Because the data you put while signing up for that particular web application was stored on the web waiting for you. And that is the work of a back-end developer. All right? So, what do you need to know as a back-end developer? What language do you need to know? So, it's simple. Technologies like MySQL, PHP, Python. You know, these are basic back-end development languages that you can learn. So I make bold to say to you that by learning my HQL, PHP, Python, you are already a back-end developer. Just these three languages. Now, don't get me wrong. You still might need to learn about version control. You still might need to learn about one or two frameworks that can help you to work faster and for your work to be more interactive and more responsive. But by learning MySQL, PHP, and Python, you are already a complete back-end developer. Now, so what then is full-stack development? It's simple. I guess it's right. Simply learning front-end and back-end makes you, makes you a full-stack developer. So you need to learn HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and MySQL, PHP, and Python. By learning this, you are already a full-stack developer.
Is it doable? Yes. All right, so let's just move ahead. Now, code editor. Now, as a web developer, you need a code editor to be able to write your code. So code editor simply will help you to write your code. We have so many code editors out there. I just, you know, listed a few here. Notepad, Notepad++, Sublime Test, Testpad, BB Edit, Commando ID, um, Virtual Studio Code, Atom. There are several um, editors out there that you can use to write your code. But for the sake of this training, this 100 days training, we are going to be using Virtual Studio Code or VSC for short. All right, you can hear people say VSC or VS Code. It's Virtual Studio Code. So that's the ID we are going to be using. All right. Now, how do you download? So this is the link. Um, the link is also in the description of this video. So you can also just tap on that link and you're able to download either for Windows, for Mac, or for Linux, all right, for Ubuntu. You can, you can tap on the link, um, which I'm going to put in the description of this video, and you're able to download um, Ubuntu. All right, so that being said, welcome to HTML. And this is a basic. We're going to be starting from here, and then we'll continue day two, we will continue from wherever we stop in our introduction to HTML. I'm just going to introduce you to HTML, the tags, and then from day two, we will dive in more into HTML. And that's where we start building stuff and you begin to see that your hands are working. Yeah? All right. What is HTML? Simple. HTML stands for Hypertext Markup Language. So, HTML is a standard markup language for web pages. So, every web page you see, the standard markup language for it is HTML. So, every web page you see has got HTML in it. HTML elements are the building blocks of HTML pages. HTML elements are represented by tags. We'll get to that. So, this is a tag. We'll get to that. All right. What is HTML? What does it stand for? Hypertext Markup Language. And it is the standard markup language for every web page. HTML tags. So, an HTML element is a start tag and end tag with content in between. A start tag and end tag with content in between. So here, this is a basic HTML element okay so we have a start tag which is h1 we have end tag which is backwards slash h1 and then we'll have content in between them now what this mean is that if this is a start tag this is the content and this is the end tag what it means is that this and this are not visible on your web page what is going to be visible on the web page is going to be the content that is in between the, the, the start and the end tag, which for this case is going to display this is a heading. Right? I hope that is clear. The start tag and the end tag is not visible to visitors on your website. It's only visible to you as a developer. You use this to tell the web page, oh, this tag has to be an header tag. This tag has to be a paragraph tag, or this tag has to be H1 tag. That means very big header tag, or H2 tag, the one that is next to it. We'll discuss about this as we go down. What I want you to understand now is that you have a start tag, which starts with H1, and then end tag, which always starts with a backwards slash. So you see this is P tag, which is for paragraph, and you see that the end tag also has got a backwards slash. So for every end tag, you are going to have a backward slash to it. So if this is P, the end tag is going to be backward slash, slash P. If this is H2, the end tag is going to be backward slash H2. All right. And like I say, the content in between the tag is what is going to be visible to the website visitors. Okay? 
All right, so this is a simple HTML document, and this is how you start building your web pages. This is how you start building your web pages. Now, I am going to open my virtual studio code, which I've already downloaded, and then I will walk us through how to create basic HTML document, and I think we'll call it a day just after explaining that. So you need to pay keen attention because now we want to start the main thing. Just before that, now, if by looking at this document, it might look very strange, but nothing here is, um, is difficult. All you need to do is to pay good attention, right? Now, you see this doc type HTML simply is telling you that this is HTML5. So we've got HTML1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 based on the evolution of HTML, right? So right now, we're using HTML5, and that's why you have doc type HTML here. All right. For every web page you see, it starts with an HTML open tag and an HTML close tag. So every content here is between the open tag of HTML and the close tag of this HTML. So every content on the website is between these two tags, the opening tag of HTML and the close tag of HTML. Now, this lang en simply is just saying this is for English language, right? This is English language. That is why you have this LAN EN. All right, so if it's um, another language that is a primary language of this website, it's going, to be, it's going to be that language, right? So that is why you go to some websites and you see that the primary language is not English, but you can translate from that language to English, all right? So that means you might have language learn en and then you can also have other languages that you can translate to from the website and then the meta tags um, are actually for responsiveness for screen responsiveness on your web page so um, we're going to discuss this um, in depth as we grow you know in this training but just know when you pick up your phone and visit a particular web page you see that the web page we shrink to the size of your mobile phone and still looks very okay. And then you can still pick up your phone and pick up your laptop, sorry, and go to the same web page and it will still display very well on your website. And then you use a television screen, it will still display very well. That is because of this meta tags, all right? Meta tags. So they are responsible for the responsiveness of your website. And then the title simply is what you see at the bar when you launch a website what you see on the bar the name of the website normally is what is in the title and then this is the body tag which we are going to explain in detail all right so now i will go ahead and open my virtual studio code and from there you see these basic tags okay so this is my virtual studio code um when you open your virtual studio code for the first time you it might look a bit different but this the same thing so here we are going to create a folder we start by creating a folder and that folder it's where your web pages are going to be stored all right so now we'll go to file please pay keen attention because if you miss this you cannot progress so you go to file and then we're going to go to open folder tap on open folder and here we can create a folder we can create a folder here. So if you already have the folder, you can just tap on the folder that you've created already in the any location in your computer. But for this particular training, we're going to create a new folder. So here we tap on create new folder. And I'm going to give this folder 100 days coding, just like that. And then I will hit enter in my keyboard to select it. And then I will tap on select folder. Okay. So once we tap on select folder, that means the folder is, so I will just say yes, is the folder we're going to be working with. So you see 100 days coding here. Yeah? So this is a folder we just created. So now our website is going to be stored inside this particular folder. The next thing we'll do is to create a file. So we're going to have different files. Uh, so we can just close this we're going to have different files inside our folder 100 days coding 
right? So we're going to have HTML files, we're going to have CSS files, we're going to have JavaScript files, PHP files, you know, different files, image files and all that inside our folder. But for now, let's start with HTML. So what do we do? We just go in and say new folder. So we'll tap on new folder. Here, we need to give it a name. We'll give it a conventional name, which is index dot html now listen up guys the extension is the most important thing here you see the index it's not really important you can change the name to your personal to, to your name or to anything and it will still work but you see the extension that is dot html if you change it from dot html then it's not going to work you'll have issues for instance let me delete this html and say dot Sunday, you will see that it's not giving us that logo of HTML, that icon of HTML. But if I remove this and say dot HTML, you see that it's bringing the anchor tags that will tell you, oh, this is an HTML file. So you have to make sure that your extension is at dot HTML, very important. Once that is done, tap on enter in your keyboard to save that file. So now we have index.html inside our folder 100 days coding. Right. So now we're just going to bring up our documents, our basic HTML document. All right. So I'm just going to do exclamation and hit enter in my keyboard and I will have this set out for me. All right. You can manually type this out, which I recommend for now. When you're used to it, then you can use exclamation mark. All right. So let me explain this to us. I've done this, but I think we need to explain this deeper. Okay. Now look at this, guys. Look at this, please. Head up. Look at this. Now, like I said before, the HTML doc type is HTML5, right? And then this HTML tag is the opening HTML tag, and then we'll have the closing HTML tag. Now, what that means is that everything in between this and this, this and this, are inside the HTML tag. So, your entire website is inside the HTML tag. Same here, you can see that from here, the header has got, this is the opening tag, and this is the closing tag. Like I say, the closing tag is always a backward slash before the name. Right, so you see header, backward slash header, body, backward slash body, HTML, backward slash HTML. So the, the, the closing tag has always, always will have that backward slash, okay? Now, if you look at the header tag, you see that in between the opening tag and the closing tag, we've got this. We've got the meta, um, the meta properties, and then we also have got title. So this header tag is basically for links. This is where you put your links. So if we're going to link our style sheet, our CSS um, style sheet to our website, we're going to attach it somewhere here, somewhere here, right? So the header tag is where you can link um, pages, it's where you can link, where you can just link things to your web page, all right? Now, that means everything that is inside the header tag is not visible to your visitors on the website. Please pay attention. Everything that is inside the air tag is not visible to the visitors on the web page. Now, but for this, the title is what you are going to see at the top of your web browser when you open this particular web page. So here, I will just change this title from document I will change it and say 100 days coding day one, something like that. So this is going to be, uh, let me just separate this. This is going to be the title of my website for now. So like I say, everything here, sorry about this, everything here is between the the air tag, the opening air tag, and the closing air tag. Yeah. Okay. Now let's go down to the body tag. The body tag. 
So this is the opening body tag and this is a closing body tag. Everything that is visible on the website, it's between the opening body tag and the closing body tag. Everything that is visible is between the opening body tag and the closing body tag. So let's do something. Let's just say we want to have something visible. Okay, before then, let me save this. I'll just control S to save this. Control S to save this. And to see our website and how it's doing, you go to where that folder is saved on your computer and open your file. So I'm going to show us this longer way and then in our next class, I'll show us the shorter way of getting this, right? So here, I will go to my file explorer and uh, I will look for where um, the folder is saved. I think my folder is supposed to be somewhere here. Uh, let me see. Yep, I think it's there. Yeah, this is my folder. So I open my folder and this is our file. Um, index.html that we just created. So here, I'm going to open this. But I want this to open in my um, Firefox rather than Chrome. Firefox rather than Chrome. Yep. So let me open this with Firefox or Microsoft Edge. Yep. Okay. Let's do Microsoft Edge. Yep. So now you see, nothing is displayed. We have some codes on our website, but nothing is displayed. The only thing you can see is a title, which um, we change from document to 100 days coding day one, right? So you see nothing is displayed. So let's go back to our code editor. And now I am going to ask um, an information here. So H1, and then I'll just say, this is my first heading. Yep. So opening head tag and closing head tag, and then I will save. Remember to always save to see your changes on the web page. If you save, you will not see the changes on the web page. So let's go and check our website. And here we need to refresh to see what we've just done. So you see now, now we have something now between the opening tag, the header tag, and the closing header tag. Between the body tag, I will have something displaying on our system. All right. Let's go ahead and have another code and score this one. H2. Okay. So this is my second heading. Something like that. And then let's save. Go back to our browser. And refresh and here we have it. all right so as you might have noticed this is h1 is bigger h2 is smaller that means if we use h3 it's going to be a bit smaller than this also yeah now this is where i want us to end in today's um training we are going to do this again tomorrow so check out for day two video so these videos are going to be in one playlist so we're going to have day one day two day three to day hundred so you don't need to miss anyone if you want to become a full star developer this year you don't need to miss anyone so you take day one when you're done with day one day one take day two take the three take the four take your time sit down assimilate this you know digest this and i tell you you're on your way to becoming a full stack web developer so um, thank you for your time. I'm going to drop um, some assignments, right? I'm going to drop an assignment um, just on the on the on the description of this video, and I want you to do this assignment, and you know, put a link. I will tell you what you need to do. Put a link to this assignment under the comment section, and then I will see what you've done thus far. So this is what I want you to do. You are going to use a Google document. So you just go to your web browser type for uh, type google doc create a file and then do what i want you to do for me once you do it copy the link from your google document and then paste it under the comment section for me to see but if you cannot do that you can simply 
do your assignment under the comment section and let me see what you have done um just to be sure that you learned something and you are following up so guys thank you for staying through and see you in my next video bye for now